Are you looking for an idea of what you can do with just regular old drink cans? Well, look no further than today's video. We've got a really cool home decor piece coming up next. Color outside the lines. So what you're going to need for this is our do-it-yourself can cutter and I'm going to link to the video up above and also down in the description. This holds nails, an X-Acto knife to help cut the cans, a 1.5 millimeter beadsmith punch, and this is a 3 quarter inch rabbit punch and that's what we're going to use to cut our circles. As you can see here, I've got some already pre-cut and they basically look like large sequins by the time you're done punching. The last item you're going to need are some brad nails and these are half inch. What we're going to be using for the substrate is this Umbra bulletin board and we got this at a thrift store and we've already painted it because I was using it for my office but I no longer need it so it's time for an upcycle. Let's get started. If you're interested in making your own Mondrian design, I'm going to show you how to do it in Illustrator. If you're not interested, just skip ahead to the next section. So what we're starting with here are two 3 quarter inch circles. So we're going to go into Object, Blend, and we're going to go into Blend Options. Now I've already determined that I need 27 along the width of my backer board. So go into Blend Options. Click on Specified Steps. Now I'm going to subtract the two circles that I've got on my board from 27, so that'll give me 25. I'll OK that. Then we'll go back to Object, Blend, and Make. That's going to give me a bunch of circles here, all bunched up. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on our Line Segment tool. We're going to start at one end, hold down our Shift key to keep it straight. We're going to intersect at the other end. Now we're going to come up to our selection tool, hold down the shift key and select both the line and these circles. Now we're simply going to come back up to object, blend, and we're going to replace the spine. Um, okay, so it looks like we have one too many, but we can deal with that later. It's not a big deal. So I'm just going to pop this up on the board here and I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift and just drag another copy down here right underneath it. Now I'm going to hold down my Control and D keys so that I can duplicate all the way down. Let's see if we can get one more. Let's move that up. Now I do want to mention that this is just a guideline. As we get to the actual project, this design may change. It's going to be organic. But for now, I'm just going to show you how it's done. So now I'm going to go back to Object, Blend, and I'm going to Expand. Keep it selected, and I'm going to make it a compound path by holding Control and 8. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my Live Paint tool, so it's under the Shape Builder tool here. Live Paint Bucket. You can also get that by holding down K on your keyboard. That's the shortcut. And then we're going to click to make it a Live Paint Group. Now we can come over here to our Swatch Panel and we could choose our first color, which is yellow. And then you're simply going to come along and you're going to color it however you like. Now, as you can see over here on the right, I've already done one, so I can switch it up. I can do a completely different color and design. I'm going to come over to the black. And every color you do, because this is a Mondrian pattern, you want to make sure it's outlined by black. Once you're done with your artwork, if you want to clean this up, you can just click on it come up to Object, Expand, OK that, then Object, Ungroup, 
you're going to hit object ungroup one more time. Now you can go ahead and select these stragglers and delete them. You're not going to do that until you're finished your artwork because that'll be the last step. And then that'll leave you with your color reference. So I would just take a screenshot of this and use it as a reference. It's not necessary to print this out as a template. So I think you get the gist of this. So let's move on to the next step in the process. You'll be able to build your own tool with that video, but let's cut away to an example of how it works. First, let's score a line down the can. Now that my line is scored, I'm going to cut the rest of the can. And to do that, I'm going to place it upside down into my special board here. It's got a circle cutout. I'm going to place it into that slot. Now I'm going to move the sharp edge up to the side of the can until it engages. And then I'm going to spin the can around. As you approach the side of the can where you just scored, be sure to spin just past it because you want to score that twice. Now we're done our score and we can set our tool aside. Find the side of the can where you scored. You're going to take your blade here and just gently rock it so that you break through that score. There, as you can see, I've got a clean cut here. Now I'm going to put pressure on that cut and I'm going to run that score all the way along. You can just twist it right off. Find your side again where your score is, then crease it. Once you run the score down to the bottom, just pop it right open. I like to use these titanium scissors. I find they give me a really nice cut. And what I love about these gloves is that I can't accidentally cut myself on the sharp metal edge here because this is rubberized. And this one on the right hand, it actually gives me the flexibility to hold the scissors, but it's also cut resistant. Now that we've got our piece of metal, we can take it to the side of our table and flatten it. And that's where this rubber glove really comes in handy because it also helps me to flatten it. So I've got my can here and I'm going to flip it over face side down. I've also put some brown paper down on my table to protect that. I'm going to place my rubber glove over the can. Putting pressure down with my palm, I'm going to roll it over the edge of the table a couple of times. Then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. After breaking down the cans, we're going to punch them out. So you're left with these three quarter inch circles here. We're just going to continue punching this until we've got all the black that we need. And then we're going to take a hole punch and punch another hole here for the nail. The next step is to punch the nail hole. And I usually take no more than three or four at a time. And I've got this template here that I use. And this could be anything. You could cut it out of plastic. You could even use the metal. But I find that if you do use the metal, it does tend to wear a little bit as you punch. The plastic seems to keep its shape. And then you just go ahead and punch the hole. And there you go. You'll be able to insert your nail right through that hole. So let's move on to next steps. I made myself a color reference in Illustrator. So this is what we're going to follow. So I'm going to get set up and I'll be right back to start. Attaching these couldn't be easier. I'm taking a silver marker and I'm working out my spacing and I'm just putting a little dot where the next one's going to go. And then I'm going to take one of the brads, insert it into the hole. I'm going to use my tool here. 
to hold it. And then because this is cork and pretty soft, I'm going to take this thimble. I'm going to position it. And then I'm just going to press it in. And there you go, all done. So I just have to do this another, oh, I don't know, a couple hundred more times to fill up this board and then we're going to be done. If you enjoyed this upcycle, don't forget to subscribe. The reveal is coming up next. You can find the full tutorial over at birdsofafeather.ca and don't forget to like, share and follow right here. Want more unique crafts and DIYs? Be sure to watch another video.